Hi everyone, in this video we're going to go through section 5.2, the characteristic equation. Um, and we'll start out right off the bat with an example where we have to find eigenvalues. In the previous section we were introduced to what is an eigenvalue, what is an eigenvector, um, how do we verify that those are what the what, how they're defined. Um, the next uh, step in that process is to understand how to find an eigenvalue. And in some cases it's not terrible, in other cases it gets fairly complicated. All right, but that's kind of where we lead. Now we want to find eigenvalues for various matrices. And so for this first one, A233, negative 6, um, we need to find its eigenvalues. And it all stems from that equation that we were into, introduced to in the last section and where we have to find, find all the scalars, find all the scalars, lambda, such that A minus lambda I times x equals 0 has a non-trivial solution, has a non-trivial solution. Okay, so that's what we have to find. But we know from the invertible matrix theorem, from the invertible matrix theorem, we know from that that this happens when, whoops, this happens when a, the matrix A minus lambda times I, is not invertible. Oh, okay, so non-trivial solution relates to invertible matrices. If we want a non-trivial solution, we want our matrix not to be invertible. And what's the easiest way to, ta to, to find out if my matrix is not invertible? We can find its determinant. So we find the determinant of A minus lambda times the identity, all right? That's the big key here. That determinant is going to give us our eigenvalues. So in terms of the work here, the first thing that we're going to do is find a minus lambda times i. So a minus lambda i is equal to, remember we just subtract lambda on the main diagonal, 2 minus lambda, and then 3 here, 3 here, and negative 6 minus lambda right there. And then the determinant of this matrix, AD minus BC, we have that formula. The determinant of A minus lambda I is equal to, okay, so I'm going to write this out. We're going to multiply 2 minus lambda times negative 6 minus lambda, and then subtract 9, so minus 3 times 3. All right, there's our, our determinant. Um, when you, and we want, we're going to set that equal to 0 because I want to find when that's 0 then my matrix is not invertible. When you distribute and simplify, you get lambda squared. Oops, that looks terrible. Try that again. Lambda squared, then plus 4 lambda minus 21 equals 0. So we're doing a little regular algebra in, in, in the middle of this problem. We distribute, simplify, factor lambda minus 3 times lambda plus 7 equals 0. So that tells me that lambda equals 3 or lambda equals negative 7. And we have our two eigenvalues for this matrix. We get a couple of theorems on this next slide here. The first one being, uh, well, hey, the invertible matrix theorem. That should look familiar. But now we add on two more letters. We're already up to S and T in the alphabet. Uh, so for a, a matrix being... Uh, invertible is now equivalent to the number 0 is not an eigenvalue of A, and the determinant of A is not 0. We've known that for a while. Now it's officially formally included in the invertible matrix theorem, but we also get this clause about the, the, the statement about the eigenvalue. And then theorem 3 on the slide, properties of determinants. This is uh, essentially review. We've seen these properties before. Um, so uh, A is invertible if and only if the determinant's not 0. The determinant of a product is a product of determinants. The determinant of the tra of transpose of a matrix is the determinant of its original. Uh, if A is triangular, it determinants the products along the diagonal. And then row replacement operations do not change the determinant. Okay, so those are, uh, we've seen the, that theorem before. It's being brought back here in this section just to kind of refresh your memories. There's another example that I'm leaving off um, to just remind you about determinants because we've been away from them for a chapter or so. 
Okay, now we get to the main topic in this section, and that is the characteristic equation. So a scalar lambda is an eigenvalue of a matrix, n by n matrix, if and only if it satisfies the characteristic equation of this. The determinant of a minus lambda i equals 0. So that's what is called, the, when you compute that determinant, that, that equation is called the characteristic equation. And then in example three, we're going to find a characteristic equation of a triangular matrix because that's a little bit easier to work with. So for our matrix A, we're going to write down first A minus lambda times the identity, and that is equal to 5 minus lambda up top with a couple of zeros or three zeros below it, negative 2, 3 minus lambda with two zeros, 6, 8, negative 8, 5 minus lambda with a single 0, negative 1, 0, 4, and 1 minus lambda at the bottom. Okay, and so the reason in this example, this first one where we're introduced to the characteristic equation, that we have a triangular matrix is because in that theorem that we just were uh, had our memories refreshed about, the determinant of a minus lambda times the identity is just the product of the entries along the main diagonal. 5 minus lambda, 3 minus lambda, 5 minus lambda, and 1 minus lambda. Oh, that's a terrible lambda, but we'll go with it. Equals 0. So there is my characteristic equation. Okay, And so we could even simplify this a little bit to 5 minus lambda squared, 3 minus lambda, 1 minus lambda equals 0. Okay, so there's our characteristic equation. Um, and then let's just say a couple of things here. We can see that our, what our eigenvalues are at this point, I hope. Uh, but the eigenvalue 5 has what is called a multiplicity of 2. And you may have heard of 2. And you may have heard of multiplicity in the past in dealing with graphing polynomials. It has to do with how that uh, it intersects the x-axis, whether it passes through or just skims off of and goes back up. Um, but that's the degree of the exponent there means that the multiplicity is 2. Um, and then, let's see, what else did I want to say? Uh, so be because lambda minus 5 appears twice in the character, or 5 minus lambda appears twice in the characteristic equation. 3 and 1 would both have a multiplicity of 1. Um, something else that I will just define by example here, we have what is called the characteristic characteristic, there we go, polynomial. Okay, If I take all of those factors and multiply them out, I get lambda to the fourth minus 14 lambda cubed plus 68 lambda squared minus 130 lambda plus 75 equals zero. But if I drop off the equals zero, then that is called the characteristic for characteristic polynomial for my matrix A. And that you factor to find your eigenvalues. Okay, for this next example, we're given a characteristic polynomial for a 6 by 6 matrix. Luckily, we didn't have to do this one, this determinant by hand. Uh, but what I can do to find its eigenvalues is factor. And if you factor, and by the way, your calculators, if you didn't already know, they have a factor command. So from the home screen, if you hit, let's see, what is it, F2, number 2 is the option to factor, and then you just type that polynomial in, and it will factor it for you, spit it out in its factored form. But if you do that here, you get lambda to the 4th times lambda minus 6 times lambda plus 2, okay? So that is my characteristic polynomial, and then lambda equals 4 or lambda equals zero, rather, lambda equals zero, has multiplicity, I'm going to abbreviate that, four, lambda equals six, has multiplicity one, and lambda equals two, also has multiplicity one. One, there we go. Okay, so that is all we had to do for that one. Oh, that should be lambda equals negative two. Whoops, there we go, squeak that in there. Okay, now we're going to transition to talking about something called similarity. So I'll define that first, and then I will we'll see how that ties in in the theorem right below, uh, ties into eigenvalues. Okay, so similarity. A is similar. A 
is similar to B. So two matrices are similar if there exists if there exists E X. Whoops. If there exists an invertible matrix P such that SD for such that P inverse times A times P is equal to B or equivalently A equals P B P inverse. Okay, so that is what it means for two matrices to be similar. They're basically the same if I multiply one of them by a matrix, another matrix, and its inverse. So that's kind of a, a cool relationship that exists with matrices. A and B are not the same, but they're pretty close because when I multiply them by this other matrix, they are the same. I multiply one of them by this other matrix and its inverse, they are the same. Okay, so that's our definition for similar. And how does that tie into eigenvalues? Why is that important here? Well, the theorem says if two matrices A and B are similar, which we've just defined, then they have the same characteristic polynomial. If our goal is to find more eigenvalues, well, of matrices, here we have a way to make the, to maybe make the process more efficient. Two matrices are similar. They have the same I characteristic polynomial and hence the same eigenvalues with the same multiplicities. So that's pretty cool. Similar matrices have the same eigenvalues with the same multiplicities. All right, and I want to go through a proof of this one because it's kind of interesting, I think. So let's take a look at it. Proof. All right. If, if B equals P inverse times a times b because they are similar then b minus lambda times the identity is equal to p inverse a p minus lambda times p inverse p so let's take a look at what i did there so i just wrote it down but let's see what i actually did on the left hand side let me get my highlighter there we go i subtracted lambda times the identity so from the left-hand side, I subtracted lambda times the identity. On the right-hand side, I subtracted, take a look at that, lambda times the identity. So I basically wrote the same equation on the left, but subtracted lambda times the identity on both sides. I just wrote it in a particular way on the right-hand side. And the reason that I wrote it that way is because I know where I'm going, and ultimately I want to factor some things here. Okay, so what can I factor? Let me write this over here a little bit more. So B minus lambda times the identity is equal to, first I'm going to factor a P inverse out on the left hand side, right? I have P inverse right here. I have P inverse right here. That lambda is just a scalar. So properties say that I could like multiply, I could, I could change the order of the scalar and multiplication there. So I can factor P inverse out and what's left in the first term, AP, minus in the second term, uh, lambda times P. Cool. So we factored that out there. All right. Maybe you can see where this is going in the next step. Do you see the P's come into both terms? So I'll ask the question, and then I'll answer it myself. Where am I going to factor that P out? I heard someone say on the right. <laughs> uh, so inside of the parentheses, I'm going to have A minus lambda times the identity. And then we factor that P out on the right-hand side, all right? So B minus lambda I on the left-hand side of the equation, P inverse A minus lambda I, P on the right-hand side of the equation. It would be really, really great if I could get the P inverse and the P to be next to each other because then I could just say that they're the identity and then cancel them out. But I can't force that. That would be incorrect, all right? So what we do is using theorem three, and I'll write it down, that's the theorem that I showed a little bit earlier. Using theorem three, we're gonna take the determinant on both sides. We're gonna take the determinant on the left of B minus lambda times the identity, and the determinant on the right of all that stuff, P inverse, A minus lambda I, P. Okay, the advantage of that is on the right, product of a determinant of a product is the same as the product of the determinants, P inverse, 
determinant of a minus lambda i, determinant of p. Now remember, determinants are just numbers. The determinant of a matrix can be 7. So the determinants are just numbers. So can I commute numbers? The answer is resoundingly yes. So I could move things around now that I have determinants. So the determinant of a minus lambda i is the determinant, oh, let me move it over a little bit here, is the determinant of p inverse times the determinant of p, which these two guys I can just put back together. So I'm kind of going all over the place with this problem. Hopefully that's all right. Determinant a minus lambda i times the determinant of p inverse times p. Oh man, this is awesome. And then that, well, p inverse times p is this, just the identity. The determinant of the identity is just 1. And so all of that we're left with determinant a minus lambda i. Let me just write it twice for consistency. Determinant of a minus lambda i right there. Boom. Um, and that's that's basically the conclusion of the proof. Let me write the two pieces next to each other so it is kind of together. Bring this down. The determinant of b minus lambda i is equal to the determinant of a minus lambda i. And what does that mean? They have the same eigenvalues. They have the same characteristic equation. And that's pretty cool. So we've got this relationship between similar matrices and their eigenvalues. We'll close out the section with two uh, little warnings here. And the first one, I'm going to write down two, oops, I'm going to write down two matrices. Uh, this one here, 2, 0, 1, 2. And this guy here, 2, 0, 0, 2. Okay, so those two matrices, because they're triangular, I know their eigenvalues. They both have an eigenvalue of 2 and a multiplicity of 2. However, these two matrices are not similar. So if they're similar, then they have the same eigenvalues. However, if they have the same eigenvalues, that does not mean that they are similar. And that's warning number one. Uh, warning number two is similar is not the same as row equivalent. Okay, similar, row equivalent, those have two different meanings. So if you find the two matrices are similar and you use the tilde symbol, um, that is not correct. The Tilde? Tilde? One of those. Uh, that is not correct. Uh, those, those two things, similar means a very specific relationship in that A equals uh, P inverse, or B equals P inverse A, P, or the other way around. Um, not the same thing as row equivalent. You can't necessarily do row operations to turn matrix A into matrix B if they're similar, okay? So that's just something to be aware of. And that closes out this section. Thank you for listening. Get to work on the homework. Let me know if you have questions. Have a great day.